Here are your African news highlights. Africa wide, Africa hails the return of Benin bronzes, but questions remain. Ivory Coast, Ivory Coast urges Mali to free its detained soldiers. Diaspora, Trump ex official John Bolton admits he helped plan foreign coups. Rwanda, Rwanda's ex governor sentenced to 20 years in prison for complicity in the 1994 genocide. Ethiopia, Ethiopia asks UN to rebuild its infrastructure in Tigri. South Sudan. South Sudan suspends dredging of Nile tributaries. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe government to start punishing retailers for selling goods in US dollars. Diaspora. 13-year-old girl gains admission to a US university set to become a doctor by the age of 18. Africa hails the return of Benin bronzes, but questions remain. Prices artifacts taken from African nations during German colonial period will be permanently returned. After a century of restitution claims, Germany is transferring ownership of 1,130 bronzes to Nigeria, a groundbreaking step in the return of looted art. The valuable artifacts, sculptures and reliefs made of bronze and brass, as well as works made of ivory, coral and wood, were stolen from the former Kingdom of Benin by the British in the brutal punitive expedition in 1897. The royal palace from pre-colonial times was razed to the ground and Benin city is what is now northern Nigeria was almost completely destroyed. Although there is excitement about the return of cultural artifacts to Africa, there are still questions surrounding the payment of monetary compensation for damages caused. Ivory Coast urges Mali to free its detained soldiers. Ivory Coast National Security Council on July 13th called on the Malian authorities to immediately release 49 Ivorian soldiers detained in Mali. Mali's military government in a statement said that its forces had captured 49 soldiers who had come in, into the country from its neighboring Ivory Coast with the intent to stage a coup. Terming the soldiers as mercenaries, the Malian authorities said they had landed in Bamako, the capital, on July 11th without permission. The soldiers were carrying weapons, ammunition, and other military equipment, according to the government statement. However, Ivory Coast contested Mali's claim. It is said no Ivorian soldiers from its contingent was in possession of weapons and ammunition when he got off the plane. Trump ex-official John Bolton admits he, admits he helped plan foreign coups. Former U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton has admitted on television that he has helped he has helped plan coup in other countries while arguing that the January 6, 2021 riot in Washington fell short of such efforts. Bolton, who served as Trump's national security advisor from 2018 to 2019, did not specify which government he had helped to overthrow, but while in his post, he advocated for U.S. military intervention in Venezuela. Bolton served in the U.S. Department of Justice and State during three Republican administrations, starting with Ronald Reagan in the 1980s. He served as the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations under former President George W. Bush. Bolton unrepeatedly pushed for the U.S. invasion of Iraq and has voiced support for bombing Iran and North Korea. An interventionist approach to foreign policy that put him at odds with Trump, who fired him in 2019. Rwanda ex-governor sentenced to 20 years in prison for complicity in the 1994 genocide. Former Rwandese governor Laura Busibaruta has been sentenced to 20 years in prison for complicity in genocide. The verdict comes more than 28 years after the Tutsi genocide of 94 when he was head of the Kikongoro pre Prefecture in Western Rwanda. After nearly 11 hours of deliberation at the court of assize in Pai, the 78-year-old was acquitted as a perpetrator of genocide but found guilty as an accomplice to genocide and crimes against humanity for four massacres. Musibaruta, whose trial began on May 9th, was the highest-ranking Rwandese official ever tried in France for crimes related to the Tutsi genocide. He has always denied his involvement in the genocide. Loro has been in France since 1997 and was under judicial supervision. He has 10 days to appeal his conviction. Ethiopia asks UN to rebuild infrastructure in Tigri. The Ethiopian government on Ju July 12th commissioned a UN agency to rebuild some of the destroyed infrastructure in Tigri, a region in conflict with Addis Ababa and controlled by rebel authorities as part of a project funded by the World Bank. 
The World Bank awarded a $300 million grant to Ethiopia in April, funding a project to help conflict-affected communities in the country. The project aims to rebuild infrastructure destroyed by the conflict and Im improve access to basic services and make it easier for victims of gender-based violence to access assistance programs. South Sudan suspends dredging of Nile tributaries. South Sudan President Salva Kiir has suspended all dredging activities on the Nile tributaries following opposition within his government. Mr. Kiir's order put, put to end weeks of public debates sparked by the arrival of, of months ago of a 21 truck convoy from Cairo with dredging equipment, which brought to light the ag agreement signed in April last year. He noted that after following the argument keenly, he realized the outcry from both sides came because his country had not conducted informed public consultation that addressed the concerns. The 30-kilometer canal project involves dredging an aquatic weed control in the Bahar El Ghazar basin and creating landing spots along the canal. While some argue it will mitigate the perennial floods that displace thousand in, thousands in unity states, others say the project will only benefit Egypt at the expense of the South Sudanese. Zimbabwe government starts punishing retailers for pricing goods in U.S. dollars. Retailers in Zimbabwe are further rejecting the Zimbabwean dollar by pricing their goods and services in U.S. dollars amid a demand by government workers that their salary be pegged to the U.S. currency. The first to fall fall of a government crackdown on the practice is Schweppes Holding Africa through its Belt Bridge Juicing Company, which produces the popular Mazoi orange drink. On July 11th, the government dealt dealt the manufacturer a heavy blow by penalizing the company for allegedly pricing and selling their drinks in U.S. dollars. In a letter to the company, the Finance Minister Secretary George Guvamatanga said his office had been informed about the claims. This happens at a time when Zimbabwe's economy was already in recession and had con contracted by 6%. Output dropped because of economic instability and the removal of subsidies on maize meal, fuel and electricity, as well as suppressed foreign exchange earnings, the African Development Bank economic outlet has said. 13-year-old girl gains admission to a U.S. university set to become a doctor at 18. An exceptional girl named Alina Alane has set a new record as the youngest African-American girl to be admitted in a medical school in the U.S. after gaining admission into University of Alabama Birmingham School of Medicine at the age of 13. Alena Alale had previously gained admission to the Arizona State University to study engineering at the young age of 12 years old. After one year of studying engineering, she decided to switch her career path to become a medical doctor. She took a full course load in Arizona State University and Oakland University, and after just one year, she has already finished two and a half years of college studying engineering. You go, girl! Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It is the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.